Hi everyone, Scott here, and today I wanted to share some tricks with the retouch brush and how to remove things like footprints in the desert from your images. So this is a shot of the Mesquite Dunes in Death Valley, a place you want to visit at dawn, so the desert breezes have removed the footprints left by the previous day's visitors. On my last visit, my schedule didn't work out and I was only able to visit the dunes at midday. I took this picture because I liked the rolling dunes and how the mountains rise above the sands. You know, compositionally, I really like this image. However, it's taken at an unfortunate time of day. In addition to the harsh light washing out color, there's all these footprints from people like me marching around the dunes. I know I can clean up the footprints in perfect layers, and I have some ideas for the stylization too. But first for the cleanup. I'll duplicate this layer so we can see where we started. I have the photo suite set up to create smart layers by default. I'll switch the new layer to a simple layer, and that re-enables all my retouching tools in the tool well. Predominantly, I'm going to use the retouch brush to remove these footprints. The retouch brush is really great when you have a part of your photo that's generally very smooth, like this sand dune. There's virtually no texture, no grain or patterns that need to maintain continuity. I'll make a nice big brush, position it close to the edge of the dune, but not beyond it, and just sweep over these footprints. And boom, the retouch brush smooths this out very nicely. A couple of clicks here and there. And I'll do the same thing in this next segment of the photo. Take all these guys out and this batch up here. As I get closer to the edge of the dune, I just have to be more careful about where I'm brushing and not cross over the edge of the dune. Let's look at that. This area is nice and smooth now. No evidence of foot traffic. And for the edges of the dune, what I find works well is taking the opacity of the retouch brush down into the 20s. Uh, 22 is good enough. I'll make the brush smaller, straddle the edge of the dune, and sweep it across. And sometimes I'll take the brush across two or three times just to smooth it out. So the definition of one dune versus another is still there, yet it has a soft, smooth transition. I'll use this same technique through the rest of the image and get rid of all the footprints from the sand. Okay, I've done the same thing through the rest of the photo, smoothing away those footprints, leaving only gentle rolling dunes. I also removed a couple of twigs and brush and that wasn't uh, adding to the photo using the perfect eraser. Now here's the before and here's after. It's much nicer, smoother, calmer, and really lets your eyes meander into the distance without distractions. For stylization, I see this as a black and white image, so I'm going to play a bit in the effects and black and white modules to add in some detail, some definition, and craft a final image. Here's the final image I settled on after some treatment and effects in black and white. Here's the initial image, footprints and all, and here's the final. Let me give you a quick tour of the settings and adjustments I made in effects in black and white. I'll click effects in the module selector, and that will open the perfect effects segment of the smart layer, which has all the filters, the masks, and sliders that I changed. I began with dynamic contrast, for initial bit of definition to the scene as a whole, and some crispness to these shrubs, and I just used the natural preset for this. I then added a tone enhancer to add in detail to the mountains and the mid-ground dunes. And this is where I want your eyes going. The foreground remains softer, and I used a masking bug to remove the tone enhancer from the foreground, only applying the filter to the upper two-thirds of the scene. I added a second tone enhancer bumping up the detail slider just a touch for the mountains only. You can see the layer mask, the uh, effect is only applied to the mountain range. I used the perfect brush to selectively apply the effect to just the mountains. The last thing I did is a color enhancer. Now this is subtle, it cools the image down just a bit, and it bumps the greens and the shrubs so they jump out a little more from the sand dunes. So that's the effects. Now let's look at the black and white adjustments. First, I lowered the brightness and increased the contrast to get those darks to become darker. Then I started with the red preset in the color response pane. This is a really good starting point for landscapes. Now, I played with the aqua channel a little bit. Um, here's the red preset right out of the chute. 
And, you know, I then brought up the aqua channel just a touch. That took the edge off of the sky, which was getting a little too dark for my taste. Moving on to the tone curve. This curve works the same way as the tone curve in the tone enhancer in effects, and it's really powerful. What I did here is pull down this point on the curve to deepen the shadows, make the shadows darker. Here, I'll take it further down so you can see the effect. Now to protect the rest of the tones, I set another point a little farther up the curve. This point acts as an anchor, protecting the rest of the curve. Notice as I change the shadow point, there's only subtle changes in the highlights. That extra point helps isolate the changes to only those tones I want to manipulate. Next, I added a toner to the image. I favor the selenium tones for my black and white photos, and I started with the selenium one preset, I believe. And then I adjusted the balance and the amount sliders to my liking. And finally, I added a vignette with a very subtle touch to darken just the corners of the image. So walking this from bottom to top one last time, I began with this image, compositionally strong, but washed out and <laughs> riddled with footprints. Using the retouch tools in Perfect Layers, smoothed away the footprints from all the dunes, and also removed a few distracting twigs and shrubs. And finally, added some definition and pop with effects and black and white. So for your next everyday type shot, spending a quarter of an hour or so in the perfect photo suite can yield a really pleasing result.